Um, this is another example. This is uh, our simulation of the World Trade Center evacuation. This is a, it was a very difficult simulation to run. It's a 110-story building. There's about 9,000 people in the building, and we had to run uh, numerous evacuation scenarios to see if we could reproduce and understand what actually happened in the World Trade Center. And we got very, very good results with these simulations. Our prediction of the evacuation time with 8,000 people in there is about one hour 30 minutes. Now, Tower 1 collapsed after one hour 40. And so we think what our simulation is telling us is that everyone that probably could have got out probably did get out. There was sufficient time for 8,000 people to get out. But they were very lucky on 9-11 because it was early in the morning, there weren't many people in the building. Normally the building has a 25,000 people occupancy. We ran a simulation with 25,000 people in there and the evacuation time is about two and a half hours. Okay, so you, you would have had about 9,000 fatalities in the North Tower alone um, had the building been fully occupied. We also looked at other simulations. We looked at the power of these models is you can begin to ask what if questions. And so one of the questions that uh, was around at the time was, well, did the firefighters going up the staircase, did they really slow down the evacuation? Did they have a detrimental effect on the evacuation? And what the simulation showed is it would have slowed some people down, but not many and not to a detrimental level. So our analysis of this suggests that the firefighters did not have a detrimental impact on the overall evacuation. Another thing we looked at was there were something like a thousand people trapped above the impact floors. And the question we wanted to ask is, had one of the staircases survived, could everyone have got out in time? Had one staircase survived? The thousand people that were trapped upstairs. And the answer to that question tragically is yes. Had one of those three staircases survived, we predict that everyone above could have made it out of the building. And so there's a message there about how we design these high-rise buildings, the nature of the staircases, how closely co-located they are, and the materials at which they're made out of. Um, I'm going to skip this example because I think I'm running out of time. I want to jump onto some ship examples. Here is an example of some work we're doing uh, for large cruise ships. And in this case, we're looking at how long does it take to muster the passengers from their cabins. This is a night simulation. So they're evacuating from the cabins and they've got to get to the muster station. The people with the yellow jackets on, they've put their life jackets on. And so we're, measure we're, we're, we're simulating their performance as if they're wearing life jackets. So you can see this is quite a large ship and we're trying to get people to the muster station. This is now a part of ship design. We, the International Maritime Organization has a set of procedures which we here at Greenwich help develop to allow you to use ship evacuation modeling to certify um, uh, large passenger ships. It's not just modern ships. This is um, the, uh, um, the victory. And uh, prior to the 200th anniversary of uh, the victory at Trafalgar, uh, we were asked to do some simulations of evacuation on board this ship because the Queen was going to hold a banquet on board and the Royal Navy wanted to know if there was an incident on board, could we get uh, Her Majesty and the rest of the party off the ship uh, prior to uh, a, a catastrophic end? And the answer to that was yes, we could, uh, and we helped sort out the arrangements and so on. So we can apply these to not only modern ships, but also to ancient ships. And it's quite interesting, we've been working on the oldest ship in the Royal Navy, HMS Victory is the oldest ship in the Royal Navy, and we're also working on the newest ship, the new aircraft carriers for the Royal Navy. So we're spanning the, the whole breadth of uh, the Royal Navy's um, ships. Aircraft is another area that we do a lot of work on. Uh, we helped uh, in the design of the Airbus A380. We were involved very early on looking at different possible layouts of this aircraft to find what layout would be most conducive to evacuation. And we helped eliminate lots of different concepts for this aircraft. And here's an example of some of the simulations that we did uh, looking at the evacuation of these people. Uh, there's about uh, 700 people, 800 people in, in board in this particular configuration. And here we're looking at how quickly they can get off if they use all the exits. Um, so we've been involved in the design of this aircraft and what we're now working on is this aircraft's successor. It's called the blended wing body. Um, it's this, it looks, it's this sort of configuration. 
It has something like seven aisles. Most aircraft today, wide body, have two aisles. The blended wing body has seven aisles. On a single deck, you can have about a thousand passengers. And the question is, how can we get all these people off through half the normally available exits in 90 seconds? Okay, and this is one of the showstoppers for this design. The plane is, uh, not, um, is intended for service about the year 2025, uh, and we've been working on this for about five years. Uh, and we're getting closer and closer and closer to coming up with a design that can let everyone off in 90 seconds. And here's an example of one of the simulations. Now, this is quite an advanced simulation. The people in red here are cabin crew, and they're actually giving instructions to the other passengers, telling them where to go. And some of the people are listening to them and some of them aren't, uh, and being directed to the various exits. You can see we're only using half the exits. Uh, there are even plans for double-deckers of this, which uh, we could be talking about maybe 1,800 passengers, uh, bigger than some cruise ships. And so evacuation analysis is key to the design of this aircraft. And it's, as I say, this is one of the showstoppers. Aerodynamics is not a problem. Engines is not a problem. It's evacuation is the issue in this case. Okay, I've spoken about the uh, left-hand side of the equation. Now I want to talk about the right-hand side and about the fire. How do we determine how much time is available? And I, I swear this is the only equation I'm going to show you. But basically what we do is we use very sophisticated fire models called fire field models. These are based on computational fluid dynamics principles and basically these, these are solving the Navier-Stokes equations to predict how fluid, how hot fluid, moves through a structure. And essentially what we do is we take a, a fire enclosure, we divide it up into thousands of little cells and then we solve the equations in each of these cells and in each of these cells we end up with a temperature, a pressure, a velocity, a smoke concentration, toxic gas concentration and so on. At each one of these locations, at each point in time. And that's essentially what it is. It sounds simple but believe me, it's very, very complicated. Uh, now, we've developed software called SmartFire to simulate uh, to, to, to solve the Navier-Stokes equations and represent how fire behaves in a structure. Um, and what I'm going to show you here is just some examples of what we can do with this. We can use our software to model very complicated shapes. This is the, uh, an MD-11. This is actually, we were involved, we helped the Transport uh, Canada to help understand what happened in the Swiss airplane crash. Uh, we were the only people they could find who could model the fire in this very complicated shape. Other software tools can only model blocks, square blocks, whereas our software can handle very complicated shapes like this. We can use the software to predict how smoke spreads. We can use the software to predict how carbon monoxide and other poisonous gases are generated in fire. And we can also use our software to predict how sprinkler systems and water mist systems work. Now, I say we can. These are all areas of research. And some of the people here in the back are doing their PhDs, or have done their PhDs, in developing each of these components. So it's a very active area of research that we're still involved with. 